I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! Hey everybody, welcome back to Big Apple Hockey Bar Talk, where we gauge our topic on gauge gauge our confidence on NHL topics based on our choice of drink. Are you so confident you're buying everybody around on it? Yeah, so so you just want a beer or I'll take a shot because you need a shot. So we're going to start with this one. By the way, once again, watch the final buzzer with John Falkowski after most Ranger games or the night after. But the Rangers don't need JT Miller. I want to say beer. Um, they could use him. I, I, I just... Do they need JT Miller to the point where they're bring they're they're trading Braden Schneider like Vancouver supposedly wants? No, no, because it's just not worth it at that point. Braden Schneider is going to be a corner. He, he is already a cornerstone defenseman for this team. Uh, I, I mean, if you got to talk about the team's most consistent defender as of late, it's Braden Schneider. He played up on the top pairing when Adam Fox is out. He was better than Ryan Lindgren on that top pairing. He's tremendous on the third pairing. They could probably move Keandre Miller, Jacob Truba down a pairing, and I think the the team would play better with Schneider getting the increased minutes. So, um, no, they don't need JT Miller to the point where they're giving up Braden Schneider, but yes, he could help them out. So, beer. I'm gonna go shot because they need third line help. That third line is invisible, and you're talking. And by the way, this is where. This is there's an argument that I used to say about the identity line for the Islanders when they used to call it the best fourth line in hockey. And at the time, they're th- they they played almost more than the third line. Then your third line, then your fourth line is really your third line. That's where the Rangers are right now, because the line of Gaudreau, Reeves, and whoever the hell they put on the on the the third spot, they play more and better than the Heedle. Uh, what was it last night? Gauthier and McKeg? Was it? I, I don't even know because it's always it's always changing. But the Heedle line is completely invisible. I understand Filipino scored a goal last night, everybody. I, I I haven't forgotten that. And I like the kid. But that line is they need a third line. That's what they need. Can't I can't stress that enough. So uh, no. you, you do realize that they need to need a winger to get Dryden Hunt out of the top six, right? They have one named Capo Caco that's coming back eventually. When? When? That's a good question. I, I don't. I, I they don't need even top know six help. Whether whether you want to admit it or not, they need top six help. They do need top six help, but I think you got Caco, and you also you're going to have Vitaly Kratsov at some point again. And well, Tractor might win that series, so it might not be for uh, a little more time. Yeah, but eventually it's going to. It's, it's going to happen. They have two more months of hockey. So that's a way to add without even doing anything. And it benefits both the Rangers and Kratzoff to play him because play him, get his trade value up, trade him at, trade him at the draft if you want, or play him and keep him. But J, uh, sorry, Jonathan Tanner Miller, uh, there's, they don't, they don't need him. It's, 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 that's, that's not going to answer any questions. He's not winning any face-offs. He's not going to be the third-line center. Larry Brooks is completely wrong about this. You know what? Send him to Toronto, where they don't play any defense either. So, which I I'll, I can't wait to tell you about that discussion I was having with somebody last night. But, Philk, the Islanders can move Josh Bailey at the trade deadline. Beer. Uh, I mean, I don't know who's really going to want Josh Bailey. Maybe there will be a team out there, but what does he have to give you at this point? I I mean, I know most Islander fans have been unhappy with his play. Uh, I've seen his play. I've never been a big fan of Josh Bailey. I've always thought of him as a, 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 a meh, vanilla player that really doesn't do a whole lot. He has 23 points in 43 games, including three goals. Three. Mm-hmm. That's terrible. For a guy who's supposed to be a top or a middle six option, he's a minus 10. I'm not saying that plus minus is a great indicator of defensive play, but Josh Bailey has never been a great defensive player. He's been a barely fringe above average defensive player 
I, I don't, I don't like his game at all. I'm not really a fan. Um, but then again, I, I, I don't know who gives up what. And maybe, it, maybe if it's a pennies on the dollar type trade, because I don't, I don't know what the Islanders get for a player like him. But um, again, his contract isn't good either. It, it, yeah. I mean, he's making five million for what another? I think two years after this one. Yeah, I believe it's two more years. Yeah, two years more years after this one at five million even. So yeah, um, I I I just don't know who gives up what for that type of deal and helps get rid of what I think is a waste of cap space. So we'll see. I'm gonna go. Beer. I'm gonna go beer. By the way. And uh, the only reason I'll get into why it's not a shot in a second, but yeah, three goals, 20 assists. You're not really getting him at peak value at the moment, but he was really good in the playoffs the last three years for the Islanders. He, he's, he scores big goals. He led the team in scoring. I think one of the two years or second in, in all three of the years that the Islanders went deep in the playoffs, but three goals, you're, you're not going to get that much. But then again, hell Taylor Hall still got a, a first round draft pick and uh, a prospect that went the other way that he only had two goals last year when he was a Buffalo Sabre, but it's just, I, uh, you know, I, I think it's more of a move you can make at the draft and you can find a team like, Arizona that's just going to take on his salary and then that's going to be it. But you know, he plays good in the playoffs. That's the one reason why I think a, a team might come calling. So, yeah, well, we'll see about that. I mean, I don't think he has any trade protection. I would have to take a look real quick. Uh, yeah. no, he does not have trade protection at all, so he can just be moved wherever. But I mean, looking at his uh postseason play i mean he had 13 points in 19 games last year and then the year before he had 20 in 20 but he only had two goals in that 2020 run out of those 20 points and he had six in 19 games last year so i mean yeah his playoff stats were decent in the playoffs these last three postseasons he's had but i i don't know i'm i'm not buying that and i wonder how much it is uh, due to the uh, the players around him just playing as well as they have, so I think he had some chemistry with the B line, but after that, I mean, now that there's their their chemistry has been a little bit lacking. They he I don't know, they, they, something's been missing with their those guys this year, and that's the reason why Barry Trotz has had to move him around. Filk, we've talked about the Edmonton Oilers goaltending situation a lot over the last three months. Do you remember in the first two months when we talked about Jack Campbell being as good as Eker Sesterkin? Because the Toronto Maple Leafs badly need a goalie at the deadline. Pepperidge Farm remembers. <laughs> Pepperidge Farm remembers. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I I don't know where they get their goaltending from. I, there's not really any goaltenders available. Mark Andre Fleury does he wave to go to Toronto? I, I mean. I think Toronto's kind of stuck with what they have. Uh, I'm going to say only a beer here just because of the fact that I think Campbell can rebound and, and still play well for them. I think they need other things. I I, I like the Ilya Labushkin acquisition, but I, I think they need more bottom six depth. Uh, I would, I would prefer, if I'm Toronto, I want one of either two things. I want another top six forward or I want another bottom six forward at this point. Um, I would love to get a top-level defenseman in, but I, I don't know who's going to really be available for that at this point. So, Do you want to see some numbers that are, can scare you for a second? Now, let me get into this, because on Twitter last night, or before I went to work, somebody put up a, a Venn diagram, then it had in the middle, good offense, good goalie. And it had Campbell listed as a good goalie. No. Uh, what? Yeah. First off, by the way, before I even get too far into my my answer, I'm buying everybody around on this. Holy shit, they need a goalie. Because, are you ready for this, Philk? Yeah. These are Campbell's numbers since December. Yeah. Dear it, his, his goals against has ballooned to 255, which is just bad because of those numbers. And then, hold on, I did the stat Ooh. package for Peter Morazic. Yeah. So, it's... 
and those are worse. <laughs> the only person yeah. who's got a wor- who's got a goals against that even compares to Peter Morazic is is Jordan Bennington. But we're gonna go back to to Campbell. This is since December. I know the twenty wins are right there. That doesn't matter. They need a goalie. You, you're not winning with 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 Jack Campbell. It's not Here, happening. Here's the thing: if you look at Jack Campbell's career numbers um he has this is the most games he's played in a season bingo yeah i mean he only played 22 games last year and he was solid for them last year um the year before he only played 26 games between la and toronto uh and then the year before that for la in 2019 he played 31 games so i mean this is probably him hitting a wall um Mm -hmm. But yeah, I I, I don't like. Uh, I I I think if he gets some rest, he could end up rebounding. They're going to have to play Morazic a bit down the stretch, but that's worrisome because Peter Morazic has just been horrible for them. I think he's got a nine hundred save percentage. I think if you be... go out and you get a you get a, a a legitimate top four defenseman for Toronto. I think you can help solve a lot of the problems by helping alleviate their play defensively. Um, if they went out and got a package of like Lekkonen and Sherratt Toronto, um, I think that could do wonders for them because even though Sherratt, I don't think of him as a legitimate top four defenseman. I think he's a guy that could play in there in a pinch and Lekkonen could help on in their bottom six and it would help improve their overall defensive play, which would allow them to put Peter Morazic in, in net more and rest Jack Campbell a little more going down the stretch because Toronto – I mean, in, in the standings right now, they should be more than good enough to to keep a playoff spot, even though Boston's only four points behind them. But they've got a game in hand on Boston, and I'm not convinced that Boston's all that great of a team. So, Yeah, Boston is turning it on. Um, they could have made my top ten. I decided to keep them out for the LA Kings um, when we did the power rankings. But this – I mean, this – Toronto – Oh my goodness! The, the, that game against Detroit, where they had defense optional, a ten-seven game. Well, that'll do it. That'll that'll help balloon your 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 numbers up big time. Yeah, but it that's that's still it points to both the gold that when you give up ten or sorry when you give up seven, I mean, yeah, that's you, bad. yeah, that points to bad defense and bad goaltending. Yeah, there's there's, there's no way to go. Uh, some of them weren't the goalie's fault. They just. One of those, one of the goals I'm referring to is: Did you see the one that Campbell gave the puck away behind the net? And you get the people that go, "Oh, that really wasn't the goalie's fault. He gave it away to somebody right away, throwing it front and wide open net." You know, you're a goalie; you're supposed to stay in the net. I heard that rumor one time. So big, if true. But again, the Toronto Maple Leafs badly need a goalie, and you know, I always say when you're talking about the games played thing, I always call it the Yaroslav Halak. Uh, the bridge because he broke down at 60 games and throughout his career. And then he played with the Islanders and remember the year, the 2015, when the Islanders were yeah. fantastic. He broke down at the end because he, he wasn't accustomed to playing that many games. So, and he was also in a tandem for a while with, uh, Carey both Carey price. And then it was Brian Elliott right after. Elliott, so. yep. If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.